Good afternoon. Once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I'm going to do another video today talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. And Real quickly, I, I want to say a little bit about that movie I went to see last night. I said on yesterday's video I was going to a special showing one night only. Uh, a movie about uh, evidence, archaeological evidence, that proves that the biblical account of the Exodus is true and actually happened and and I want to say that it was an, it was an excellent movie and uh, very detailed and, and a lot of information a lot of really good information um, and it's hard to give you a lot of details on it simply because it was so complex and so much information I would actually need to feel like I need to see it another two or three times so I'm definitely gonna end up getting the DVD of it um, but there was there was certainly a lot of interesting information, and it was interesting because the gentleman who made the movie um, interviewed you know, people who did not believe it, and archaeologists who do not believe it, and, and uh, then obviously archaeologists that do, and they went through a lot of the evidence. And it was very interesting how the secular uh, archaeologists who uh, don't believe are, over, are really refusing to uh, believe some of the the uh, evidence that they've uncovered it is very very compelling uh, one thing that, they, that was interesting is they found a parchment written in um, the Egyptian Egyptian language that actually describes the plagues that God struck is struck Egypt with just before the exodus written in Egyptian language that was describing those plagues from the Egyptian viewpoint very, very interesting, and there was a lot of other really inf interesting information as well. So it was called Patterns of Evidence, the Exodus, and it'll be coming out on DVD, I'm sure. Um, in fact, uh, if anybody's interested, you can go to, I think it's patternsofevidence.org um, and uh, find more information, even buy the DVD. But it was very interesting, very, very good. They also uh, had archaeological evidence of actually finding Joseph's house. Joseph's house in Egypt when he lived in Egypt and uh, a tomb in his backyard that was empty because of course they took his bones with them when they left Egypt but uh, very interesting movie uh, and, and it's always fun to look at stuff like that because the Bible is never ever proven wrong and uh, so I highly recommend it if you, can, if you get a chance to see it somehow um, <clears throat> second thing tonight State of the Union Address Wow. The spirit of Antichrist will be alive and well tonight, no question about that, uh, during Obama's State of the Union speech. He has two years left to finish America, and I believe that's exactly what he's going to do in these next two years. He's going to bring America completely to its knees so the one world government, the new world order, can rise. And that's the fact, the, the real fact of the matter is, the State of the Union is actually this, that we are on our last legs. America's on its deathbed. The economy is about to collapse. No matter what Obama tells you about how we, the economy is getting better and how they keep adding jobs, those number, I have a hard time believing those numbers. And with our debt and everything that's going on, stock market's out of control, it's very crazy. And uh, Russia and China and other nations are moving away from using the dollar. It's just a matter of time. Uh, the Obamacare fiasco was kicking in, and it appears that the uh, supposedly the first year fine was going to be ninety-eight dollars if you didn't have insurance on your IRS when you fill out your IRS taxes. And apparently, it's going to be a lot more than that because again, nothing they ever tell you is true. And Obamacare was not about health care. It's about control of the people. That's why there's an RFID chip in it. The, the uh, registry, they call it. And then there's uh, the threat of war. No doubt about that. And terrorism. And the impending judgment that's coming to America for our treatment of Israel. The one ruled government headed up by the Antichrist was about to take over. So I, I, it's hard to watch Obama. I never enjoy watching Obama, other than the fact that uh, it's interesting because of how he ties into end time events. I do, I do uh, always like to watch because of that. 
But why was it hard to pay attention to him and listen to him and watch him? But I will tonight, no doubt about it. Take notes, and I'll uh, probably be talking more about it tomorrow. Um, but any time Obama, any time I know that Obama is going to be speaking about taxes and the economy and whatever his global, whatever his economic plan is, it always makes me a little bit worried, and uh, always makes me wonder how I'm going to be able to, and how any of us are going to be able to pay our taxes or whatever that we need to do in the. Uh, in the, with Obama's plans and that made me think of a little scripture today so I want to start this video with a little passage of scripture and then get into some news stories because there's a lot of news stories to cover today but I'm in Matthew chapter uh, 17 verses 24 to 27 Matthew 17 24 to 27 just an interesting story about Peter and Jesus and paying taxes and it's kind of a cool story it kind of shows how Jesus certainly had a sense of humor so uh, Matthew seventeen twenty four, and they were, and when they were come to Capernaum, they had received tribute money. They that received, let me start that over. Sorry, and when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, "Doth not your master pay tribute?" He saith, "Yes." And when and when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, "What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute?" Of their own children or of strangers? Peter saith unto him, Of strangers. Jesus saith unto him, Then are the children free. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea, and cast an hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up, and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. Take that, and give unto them for me and thee. And sometimes I, I sit there and I think, wow, how nice would that be to have Jesus say, hey, go catch a fish so you can pay your taxes. But whenever I had to listen to Obama talk about taxes and his economic plan, it always kind of makes me try to think of that story and, and turn to help for, from Jesus himself. Because otherwise, you know, I don't know how we're going to get along in the, in the next two years as Obama tries to bring America to its knees. All right. With that... Let's get into some news stories, because there's uh, a lot going on again. A lot of stuff going on about Israel and, and the Palestinians, as usual, and a few other interesting news stories as well. So, uh, first news story is, is out of uh, the Eretz Sheva today. Erekat, relations with Israel reached the point of no return. Uh, very interesting, because I feel like the world itself has reached the point of no return. Jesus is coming back soon. And Daniel's 70th week is going to start. And there's no, no stopping it. And the New World Order is about to, about to take over. Erekat threatens new stage of enmity with Israel, demanding PA independence or that Israel take full responsibility for the region. Says PA chief negotiator Saeed Erekat threatened a new approach uh, regarding Israel in the wake of about $127 million in taxes collected for the PA being frozen, a response to the PA joining the International Criminal Court to sue the Jewish state. Um, Erekat, a member of the uh, Palestinian Liberation Organization's terrorist group's executive committee, uh, said that withholding the taxes should not cause the PA to stop its unilateral IC mo ICC moves, which are themselves a breach of the 1993 Oslo Accords, which created the PA. Now that the state of Palestine, as the PA falsely signed itself, has joined numerous international institutions in breach of the Oslo Accords, Eric Kat declared that, Nate, that relations with Israel have reached a point of no return. It is impossible to leave the current situation. This is a new stage in every sense of the term, and even if the Israeli government will try to preserve the status quo through collective punishments and threats, or if it continues with settlements, dictating terms, assassinations, arrests, siege, curfew, then that's proof that it is a state above the law. He says, I don't call to disband the Palestinian Authority, but the Palestinian Authority is the result of the struggle of the Palestinian people, and therefore either it will be the one who leads the Palestinian people from the occupation to independence, or it will call on the occupation authorities to take full responsibility. Interestingly, though, this is stuff that never comes out in the news. It says, despite Eric Katz's repeated claims of occupation, it is worth noting that the 2012 levy report 
conclusively prove that Israel's presence in Judea and Samaria is legal under international law. But according to the Palestinians, the relations with Israel has reached a point of no return. And I certainly do agree with that. We know for sure there's war coming in that region. Psalm 83 war, Ezekiel 38, 39 war. We also know there will be a covenant with many confirmed by the Antichrist. The question is, what's the timing of it? When's, what's what's going to happen first? And when's it going to happen? All right. Uh, here's another threat of war article. Um, this is out of uh, Jerusalem Online. Iran threatens Israel with lethal lightning strikes. Again, this is in response to Israel's attack in Syria the other day. It says, Iran threatens Israel with le lethal lightning strike day after the attack attributed to Israel and Syria, which cost the life of a senior-level Iranian officer. Um, they were, Israel was sent a stern message. The Zionists must wait, await our, re our response to their crimes. The Iranian media reported that Mohammed al-Jafari, chief commander of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, stated that Israel should prepare for a lethal lightning strike. The Zionists must wait, await our response to their crimes, the Iranian commander says, was quoted as saying. The Zionists have felt our wrath in the past for their crimes. The attack on Quenetra emphasizes the need to wage jihad against the erratic, until the eradication of the corrupt virus Israel. And again, Iran is constantly calling for the annihilation of Israel. They do not want peace with Israel. They will never accept peace with Israel. They'll never agree that Israel has their, even the right to exist, which is why Psalm 83, uh, verse 4, uh, let me just read that again, exactly how it's worded. Psalm 83, 4, says, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. And that is the goal of the Palestinians, that is the goal of Iran. The Muslim countries in the Middle East do not want Israel to exist. And uh, it's, the tensions are rising higher and higher there every day. Now, speaking of Iran, uh... Iran is listed. Their name. They're called Persia in the Bible, and they're listed in the salt. And excuse me, in the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war, they're going to attack uh, Israel along with Russia and Turkey and Libya and Ethiopia. Well, here's a very interesting article then today out of uh, the Times of Israel. It says Russia and Iran signed deal to widen military. Cooperation. That's a very big deal because uh, what's going on now, we can certainly see the Ezekiel 38-39 war approaching. It says, Tehran, Tehran says agreement will solve held-up cell of S-300 air defense system without elaborating. It says, Russia and Iran have signed an agreement to expand their military ties and resolve a long-standing dispute over the sale of a controversial air defense system to the Islamic Republic. In remarks carried by Russian news agencies, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shogu said in, in Tehran Tuesday that the new agreement includes expanded counterterrorism cooperation, exchanges of military personnel for training purposes, and an understanding of each country's navy to more frequently use the other's ports. The deal provides for joint exercises and military training, as well as cooperation and peacekeeping, maintaining regional and international security and stability, and fighting against separatism and extremism, the Iran Defense Ministry website, website said. Uh, the two countries have also decided to settle the S-300s problem, the, Iran, the Iranian Defense Ministry said on Tuesday without elaborating. Uh, Russia signed a 2007 contract to sell Tehran this S-300 system, but the weaponry was never delivered amid strong objections by the United States and Israel. But of course we're in the last days now, and the United States is about to be judged, and no more, and Russia and Iran are about to attack Israel. So they don't care if we, we uh, object anymore. And they also know, quite frankly, that Barack Hussein Obama is not going to step in and do anything anyway. Uh, 
our our country is no longer feared or respected by other countries. And uh, again, America is on its last days. That's what I fully believe. America is not really mentioned in Bible prophecy. And uh, America must fall so the new world order can rise. Uh, let's see. It says, Iranian defense minister told state television that Iran and Russia had, sh had a shared analysis of U.S. global strategy. It's interference in regional and inter international affairs and the need to cooperate in the struggle against the interference of regional forces, of foreign forces in the region. That's a very interesting statement. Um, but like I said, I don't feel that the United States is probably going to step in and do anything anyway, as long as Barack Hussein Obama is uh, leading our country. But we're seeing more and more news about uh, Iran, Turkey, and Russia building an alliance. And that's Psalm 8, that is, excuse me, that is Ezekiel 38, 39. Here's an article out of um, Jerusalem Post. Abbas, um, to Israeli public, choose between peace and settlements. PA president makes remarks after meeting in Ramallah with visiting Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, who announced that Japan would donate $1 million, $100 million to help reconstruct Gaza. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas said on Tuesday that Israel must choose between peace and settlements. Speaking to reporters after a meeting in Ramallah, Abbas said he was committed to resuming peace talks with Israel on the basis of the Arab Peace Initiatives and UN resolutions. Now, I I know for a fact that Benjamin Netanyahu said he'd be willing to restart peace talks based on the Arab Peace Initiative. So, very interesting. Uh, addressing Israelis, the boss said, Our hands remain extended for peace. They must choose between peace and settlement expansion at our expense. You can't achieve peace through collective punishment by withholding our money, and not through racist measures on the ground and the continued incarceration of thousands of prisoners. But, of course, again... Mahmoud Abbas and the Palestinians aren't going to give in on any issues, and they're going to continue to try to sue Israel for uh, war crimes in, at the ICC, and continue to go to the UN for resolutions to force Israel to give up land. They're blaming Israel for every conceivable reason, and, and, and none of them are true, honestly, to be honest with you. But uh, very interesting um, how this is certainly... Um, Taken, taken uh, another step toward restarting the peace talks. He also reiterated Japan's support for the two-state solution and expressed hope that peace would prevail in the region so that people could enjoy prosperity and development. Well, someone's going to step in soon and confirm that covenant. Now, here's a really interesting news story today. Pope Francis, he's got, always got something very interesting to say. Uh, this is out of NPR today, and, and <laughs> what do you what do you what do you say to this story? Uh, Pope Francis says Catholics don't need to breed like rabbits. That's the headline out of NPR. Pope Francis says Catholics don't need to breed like rabbits. On his return trip from Asia, Pope Francis made strong statements supporting the church's ban on artificial means of birth control. He also said Catholics should practice responsible parenthood and don't have to breed like rabbits. Speaking with reporters on a flight Monday from the Philippines to Rome, France, Francis encouraged the use of church-approved contraception. The, Nathlic, the National Catholic Reporter says Francis made what appears to be an unprecedented statement that Catholics may have a moral responsibility to limit the number of their children. It describes the Pope's remarks this way, telling the story of a woman he met in a parish in Rome several months ago who had given birth to seven children via caesarean section and was pregnant with an eighth. Francis asked, Does she want to leave the seven orphans? What? This is to tempt God, he said, adding later, That is an irresponsibility. Catholics, the Pope said, should speak of responsible parenthood. How do we do this, Francis asked? With dialogue. Each person with this pastor seeks how to do that responsible parenthood. God gives you methods to be responsible, he continued. Some think that, excuse the word, 
that in order to be good Catholics, we have to be like rabbits. No. Um. <laughs> wow. This guy is just something else, let me tell you. But um, to me, it's just very, very interesting uh, headline because of what's coming. Again, a one-world religion, a one-world government, the rise of Agenda 21, where they control population and, quite frankly, cause depopulation. They control the resources, they control the food, they control where you can live. And Pope Francis and Barack Hussein Obama, or, and then the United Nations, are all promoting the same income inequality uh, gospel. And I know for a fact that uh, that's going to be part of uh, Barack Hussein Obama's State of the Union speech tonight. Income inequality, along with what Pope Francis is preaching. And if you read anything at all about Agenda 21, things like that, and depopulation, Georgia Guystones, all of that stuff, New World Order goals of depopulation, and then Pope Francis makes that kind of comment. Very, very interesting people. You need to wake up and get your head out of the sand. Pope Francis is not what he appears to be to the world. And he's going to play a major, major role in the end time events. All right, now, uh, Barack Obama still will not use the phrase radical Islamic terrorism. Um, but I want to, I, I certainly will. They're, they're, they're right from the pits of hell. They're, they're satanically inspired, devil-worshipping, demon-possessed terrorists serving a false god, obeying the laws of, or, and, and commands of a false doctrinal book called the Koran. And I'm going to stand up for that all I can. Even if Barack Hussein Obama won't. And here's an interesting story. Here's what ISIS, here's the type of thing ISIS does. New, out of the New York Post today, ISIS executes 13 teens for watching soccer. They were watching a soccer game. Oh, God help this world. Um, Alright, it says, ISIS, jihadists, publicly executed 13 teenage boys for watching a soccer match. The young fans were reportedly watching an Asian Cup match between Iraq and Jordan on TV last week when they were caught by the militants in the Iraqi city of Mosul, which ISIS, or the Islamic State, controls. The group of teens were executed in public by a firing squad that used machine guns. Um, according to Raqqa, ISIS is being... Uh, according to Raqqa... That's just, I, this, this sentence doesn't make any sense. I'll skip on. Before the, children, uh, before the kids were killed, their crime was announced over a loudspeaker. The bodies remained lying in the open, and their parents were unable to withdraw them for fear of murder by the terrorist organization. The boys were slaughtered because they were said to be violating Sharia law by watching the game. Wow. Uh, a few days earlier, the Islamic State released a gruesome video showing two men being flung off a tower in Mosul. Before the ex the execution, a masked fighter using a handheld radio announced to a crowd for, of onlookers that the condemned duo had been found guilty of engaging in homosexual activity, so they threw him off of a roof of a building. Uh, enough said on that. ISIS is, a, is just a... But the sad thing is... America helped create ISIS and train ISIS because it's part of the plan to bring in the new world order, the order through chaos, to scare people to give up their rights and say, oh my gosh, we got to stop this war on terror. Even though Obama won't say the words war on terror, it's all planned to make you give up your rights. And uh, But I'm going to keep calling it out for what it is. It's a lie from the pit of hell, Islam. All right. Um... Here's a few more news stories out of the Prophecy Newswatch newsletter today. Um, again, more about wars and rumors of wars uh, in Israel. Um, it says, Region prepares for Israel-Hezbollah conflict after, after Israel airstrike kills Hezbollah commander. Lebanon is bracing for an attack from Israel if the Iranian-backed Hezbollah retaliates for an Israeli military helicopter strike last week. 
on the Syrian side of the Golan Heights. The attack killed five Hezbollah fighters. Uh, he said that one family he knows is expecting the worst and has moved his family to the mountains. People seem understandably nervous and some fear a repeat of July 2006 or worse, he said. The source added that if things get crazy, I'm heading to the American University of Beirut, which is far from the Hezbollah area of the city near the U.S. Embassy. In July 2006, Hezbollah and Israel waged a 34-day war that resulted in Israeli forces finally withdrawing from Lebanon, but not before considerable damage had been caused the country. Since then, Iran has virtually rebuilt southern Lebanon as well as the Hezbollah stronghold in South Beirut. Uh, so again, pretty pretty long article here, but again, just going to show you that uh, the tensions are building in the Middle East and uh, it can't be long before it explodes. And uh, again, wars and rumors of wars are all around us. And, uh, like I said, Psalm 83 war, which would include Hezbollah and Lebanon, certainly could be on the horizon. Um, let's go to another story out of uh, Prophecy News Watch. All right. Um, this is actually, I'm actually reading this out of Daily Mail, um, but it is in the Prophecy News Watch newsletter as well. It says, uh, hold on, it wouldn't load. All right, Christian Nurse 37 says she was sacked for harassment and bullying after praying for a Muslim colleague. A Christian health worker has accused the NHS of making her look like a religious nutcase after she was branded a bully for praying for a Muslim colleague. Uh, Victoria uh, Wastney 37 was disciplined for alleged bullying and harassment after... Anya Nayas, 25, told managers that the senior occupational health therapist had tried to convert her to Christianity. Tomorrow, Ms. Wastany will launch an employment tribunal against the NHS uh, trust she works for, claiming her employers discriminated against her because of her religion. Ms. Wastany told the Daily Mail, I am not anti-Muslim. I'm always very mindful to be sensitive to other people's beliefs. We discussed our beliefs, but I certainly didn't tell her that my way was the only way. I didn't even, I don't even believe it's possible to try to convert someone. But the way it was all handled left me looking like a religious nutcase that I would like an acknowledgement that there is a negative attitude towards Christianity in some areas, areas of the public sector. Ms. Wastany, who describes herself as a born-again Christian, was working at the John Howard Center. She said she was always careful about discussing her religion at work, because her managers had warned her that it could get you in trouble. Miss um, Wastney said her colleague had definitely initiated conversations before she invited Miss Nawaz to attend church events leaked to anti-trafficking work. She said yes, so I asked for God to bring peace and healing. Oh, let me back up. She, uh, she said Miss uh, Nawaz had come to her in tears because she was upset about health problems. Miss Wastney said, I put my hand on her knee to comfort her and asked if it was okay and said, would you like me to pray for you? She said, yes. Yeah. So I asked for God to bring peace and healing. She left the office afterwards and said she was okay. Miss Wastney also gave Miss Nawaz a book. I dared to call him father about a Muslim woman who converts to Christianity but denied it was an attempt to make Miss Nawaz convert. Okay, so anyway, again, I'll put, put this in the description box. There's some more to it. But um, there you go. She shared her faith she, or tried to pray for her, and then lo and lost her job over it for bullying. But uh, isn't that interesting? Christians lose their job because they're, they're considered bullying Muslims by offering to pray for them. But the Muslims, in fact, it happened in Oklahoma this summer, when a Muslim cut off the head of an employee where he worked because that person wouldn't convert... To Islam. <laughs> Amazing. The, the Christians are losing their right to pray for other people. We're more we seem to be more worried about that than the fact that we're as we're inviting Sharia law into our country, as we're allowing them to the Muslims to pray at the National Cathedral. I saw that 
even though Duke backed off on the Muslim call to prayer, UCLA is now doing it out in California. We're giving the Islamic faith more and more rights in America while t taking Christian rights away. And Christians are, seeing, are being told that they're too extreme for praying while our Muslim president won't say the word radical jihadist terrorism and they're the ones beheading co fellow co-workers. Spirit of Antichrist, alive and well. All right, I have one more interesting news story I want to cover real quick. Uh, also, uh, the Prophecy News Watch newsletter. Again, we got a one world government coming. Uh, we're all familiar with the phrase Big Brother, coined by, uh, I believe, uh, George Orwell, a 1984 movie. Um, here's uh, out of Prophecy News Watch newsletter Big Brother moves into the passenger seat. In 2008, the Washington legislature passed a law mandating a 50% reduction in per capita driving by 2050. California and Oregon laws or regulations have similar but somewhat less draconian targets. The Obama administration wants to mandate that all new cars come equipped with vehicle-to-infrastructure communications so the car can send signals to and receive messages from streetlights and other infrastructure. Now, the California Air Resources Board is considering regulations requiring that all cars monitor their owner's driving habits, including but not limited to how many miles they drive, how much fuel they use, and how much pollution or greenhouse gases they emit. Put these all together and you have a system in which the government will not only know where your vehicle is at all times, but can turn off your vehicle if it decides you are driving too much or driving in a way that emits too many grams of carbon dioxide, or other offensive, offensive to some bureaucratic imperative. I sometimes think privacy advocates are a paranoid bunch. Seeing men in black around every corner and surveillance helicopters or drones in the air at all times. On the other hand, if a technology is available, such as the ability to record cell, cell phone calls, the government has proven it will use it. And uh, again, need I point out... That Pope Francis is certainly championing, 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 championing the cause of the green movement and the environment and climate change, and this is all tying together. It is all tying together. We can certainly see the rise of the beast of Revelation 13, the the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the one world beast system, government, and religion of the Antichrist. And uh, it is time to make sure you know you are saved. There is one truth and one answer, and that is Jesus Christ. He is your only hope in these last days. I have no, no qualms whatsoever about saying Jesus Christ is the only way. It's not a message the world is tolerant of. It's not a message the world believes or wants to hear, but it is also the truth. Jesus Christ died for you. He will save you if you call upon him in faith. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus. He suffered and died and rose again for you. And the Bible says all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. The Bible also says in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Romans 6 23 says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. All that can't save you trying to commit a terrorist attack for Allah will not save you. All other paths will lead you straight to hell. Jesus Christ alone can save you. Worshipping Pope Francis, participating in religious rituals, sacraments, will not save you. Turn to Jesus Christ in faith while you still can and he will save you he is faithful to save you all who call upon him shall be saved but you're running out of time we are living in the very last days the whole thing is is wrapping up make sure you're ready and keep looking up god bless everyone